Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. We have a very special guest. Patreon member Jackson Fax is back with us again. Jackson, how are you, sir? I, I very much love your T-shirt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing good. Um, so for everybody out there, this is one of the things you get to do. If you go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood at the $25 level, you can come on once a month, and we'll have a discussion about whatever you want to talk about, unless, of course, you're completely shit nuts, then uh, I might have to cancel it. So, uh, which, that's happened. Um, uh, but Jackson, uh, we had you on last month, a great conversation. You do a lot of, you, you have your own channel, Jackson Facts, and we actually met at the uh, Jimmy Dore shows up in um, Sacramento last month, which seems like a million years ago, going on the road, doing shows in front of audiences, seems like a million years ago. Um, but what did you, uh, you wanted to talk today about, because um, a lot of us activists are feeling sort of hamstrung by this quarantine. There's not much we can do. There's not, I mean, they're even canceling primaries and who knows what's going to happen with the Democratic thing, with the Democratic primary. The thing, what am I, Joe Biden? You know, the primary, the thing, the stuff. Um, and so you, you've, you wanted to discuss some things that all of us as activists who are, you know, homebound, what, what we can do. So what are those? Yeah, well, a lot of people are unaware that some of the world's major problems, most of the world's major problems, link back to one industry in particular by far above all others, and that's the animal agriculture industry. So uh, it's I thought kind of you were power. going to say Russia. I thought we were going to blame. Every, <laughs> we're not going to blame everything on Russia. Oh, okay, weird. Nope, not not in this case, at <laughs> least. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of empowering to know that as an individual, you you can make a difference with your day to day actions, and it doesn't require doing that much. In fact, it really just requires non-action. It requires divesting from this one particular industry, the animal agriculture industry, uh, which is so easy and so simple. So yeah, I want to share some information with people about exactly what things in the world are, uh, you know, some of the most devastating things that are happening in the world are caused by animal agriculture and um, how easy it is to be vegan. Great. Let's walk us through it. So what do we do now? Especially because, and this, I'm glad you're bringing this up because like when I have gone to the store, it seems like the like masses and cleaning out the shelves thing has sort of subsided because everyone's having to stay home. So people are just going to the store in small increments, I guess. But I, as a vegetarian and, and like my home is vegan and gluten free. Like when I go on the road, sometimes I have to eat dairy or whatever, or I try to avoid, I don't have the celiac disease. I just gluten-free is better for my my health, my skin, and all this stuff. And sure. like the vegan gluten-free frozen pizzas were like on sale. All the regular pizzas were gone. <laughs> like I'm seeing <laughs> everyone's just grabbing meat and dairy and all these like vegan gluten-free options. There's more of them on the shelves, um, which I just noticed in my grocery store. I don't, it might be different store to store, but but I wanted to throw that out there as un, as we as you tell us things we can we can do. I'm already noticing that my lifestyle is actually easier to shop for. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, that's an important point. A lot of people are under the impression that it's more expensive or uh, inaccessible to, to live a vegan uh, lifestyle or to practice a vegan diet, a plant-based diet, uh, when it's, it's actually just the opposite. It's far cheaper, price per pound, plant products are significantly cheaper and more affordable than animal-based products, which makes sense. You know, uh, it takes, think of the resources it takes to harvest the life of a sentient individual. Got to give them shelter, you know, food and water and all this stuff. Um, you got to keep them, you know, healthy and clean and, and safe. Uh, but then, you know, with a plant, you, you drop a seed in the ground and it kind of does its own thing. You know, plants grow right out of the ground. We literally have food falling from the trees. It literally grows on trees. So there's, there's really no, no uh, you know, uh, logic to that argument that, uh, oh, it's, you know, it's unavailable or it's inaccessible. There's plant products everywhere that there would be animal products, and it, it's cheaper. Um, even in places where there's food deserts, there's a lot of vegans, um, and it's not, it's not that difficult at all. Um, so anywhere you go that you can find animal products, there's going to be plant-based options uh, ready for you. Uh, and it's that simple. When you go to the store, it's a simple matter of instead of grabbing the cruelty product that's destroying your health and the environment and the lives of the sentient animals, move your hand six inches this way and grab the cruelty-free cruelty, cruelty -free product. You know, that's the way it is in, in all stores nowadays. Um, so yeah, when it's, when it's that easy and, and we realize that there isn't a need to be consuming 
the dead flesh of a sentient individual, um, then, then there's no moral justification or logical justification for doing so. Um, and I think it's important that even though we do have this climate crisis, um, largely caused, caused by animal agriculture, and we do have a lot of the world's major human health problems largely being caused by the consumption of animal agriculture products, uh, that's not necessarily the reason that you would want to go vegan. Maybe to go have a plant-based diet, for sure, um, but uh, it's, I think, important to tease apart the differences between what it means to be vegan and to practice a plant-based diet. I think people are you know, largely confused because of the way the mainstream culture and the media portrays veganism um, versus a plant-based diet. So, I mean, with veganism, by definition, it just means reduce your cruelty as much as is practicable and possible. And that suggests the very least we can do is not directly fund an innocent animal being murdered or enslaved, bred into existence forcibly to be exploited uh, as a product. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, when we, when we uh, realize that it's just a simple matter of reducing your cruelty, um, I think we have an obligation, we have a responsibility to address this as a social justice movement, not just as a climate crisis or a health crisis, but uh, recognize that there is a victim involved. And just like with uh, racism or sexism, you know, we wouldn't say if, for example, beating our wives caused climate change, we wouldn't say, oh, I should stop beating my wife because the planet's dis destroying, you know, it's destroying the planet and it's gonna affect me personally. No, we stop beating our wives because it's inherently unethical to just to beat your wife. There's no justification for it. So it's important to tease apart the differences there. And I want people to know that uh, they can be empowered. They can take control over their lives. They don't have to create a victim uh, you know, in their lifestyle. And there's nothing we do more than eat. I mean, other than breathe and shit, uh, the next thing we do most in life is eat. So that's a lot of power we have as individuals over you know, these, the most victimized animals on the planet, individuals on the planet. Uh, so, yeah. Well, you bring up great points, um, which is uh, several things here. Uh, first, I want to point out just, just when Ron and I drove up to Sacramento and San Jose to do those shows where we met, um, we drove on the five freeway. So for those of you not familiar with California, from the five freeway goes literally from all the way from the Mexican border, all the way up to the Canadian border, right? And it drives through the center of California, what's called the the grapevine or the Central Valley where a large portion of California's agriculture is. And there are several places that have been nicknamed Kauschwitz. So it's these dairy farms or cattle farms um, where all these cows, and when you drive by them, you have to roll up your windows because it smells horrifying, um, which that's a methane gas, by the way, which is not good for the environment for any of our viewers. And then you drive past miles and miles of almond farms and produce farms. And guess what? Those don't smell horrifying. I mean, we, we stopped at a, at a gas station uh, in uh, Koalinga, I think, near one of those places. And it was awful. Like it was, and I'm just like, how do people live here? So there's just that, just, just that, right? There's just one like personal example, not to mention as we're all sort of quarantined, Anybody that has a backyard or a patio where you can grow some vegetables, guess what? You've got fresh vegetables during this lockdown, you know? And if we face another one of these or a worse pandemic or this one gets worse or whatever, like even if we get the, on the other side of this, which I, you know, I, I, I'm confident we will, China and South Korea have gotten on the other side of this, but this lockdown thing could very easily happen again and being able to grow your own food is really important. I wish I had a patio to grow my own food, but now we're learning about hydroponics uh, and all that stuff. So just from that, the going to a plant-based life that you're talking about makes all of us immediately more self-sustainable because it's kind of hard to raise a cow or a goat on your own. <laughs> yep. So um, what are some of the the, things that the person, let's say, who's watching this, who's like, I've never done plant, I've heard about it, I don't know what to do, and now that I'm sort of faced in this quarantine, I'm looking for, for alternatives, as sort of everybody is. What would you suggest for them to do? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, 
I mean, to address your, what you just said uh, before that, before I answer that, I like that you brought up the term Kauschwitz. I've never heard that before. That's great. That reminds me of uh, an important thing to, to keep in mind, that Hitler got his blueprints from the animal agriculture industry. The <sighs> blueprints that were used for places like Auschwitz and concentration camps, uh, they were taken from the animal agriculture industry, from the slaughterhouses. That tells you a lot about, um, you know, with slaughterhouses should be a thing of the past. In a modern, civilized society, um, for anyone that considers themselves progressive or they promote truth and justice and compassion, let's expand that circle of compassion to all living beings. You know, there's not enough of a difference between humans and non-human animals uh, to exploit them and cause so much suffering, at least in the ways that they experience pain and suffering. They're not all that different from humans. So I'm glad you brought that up, brought that up, Kauschwitz. I've never heard that before. And then also, you're exactly right about the plant farming. This is something that we can do very easily. People can Google do-it-yourself, uh, you know, gardens in their apartments or whatever, um, and it's really easy to make work. Um, and then uh, it, permaculture forests, of course, I think are going to happen out of necessity. I think that we should just use every square inch, especially in the inner cities, every square inch of fertile soil to promote edible plant life. But also, I want to point that I want to I'm going to touch on that real quick uh, to, to even like in, in their cities, like let's go to any inner city that has an abandoned warehouse or something like that. That could be a multi level permaculture facility right there. Like mm -hmm. you look at somebody like a, a city like, let's say, Detroit, that is, you know, all this urban decay, lost all these jobs. And, you know, they don't they don't have um, a, a, a climate for year round outdoor growth. Well, there you go. Take yep. any of these abandoned buildings or abandoned lots or whatever. And, you know, uh, federal money could could build these, put the whole neighborhood to work. And that now the whole neighborhood now has its own its own food that they can eat, consume, and even sell on the open market if need be. Yep. And you could do this anywhere. Anywhere there's a food desert, boom, you could build a permaculture. Anywhere. Mm -hmm. Anywhere it's frozen, where it's too hot, where it's a dead, anything. You could build that anywhere. That's so true. And that's we're seeing that, like I said, out of necessity happening all around the world. Community gardens and these big cities and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, really great, uh, really great point. The, the fact of the matter is no one should ever be hungry. There's no excuse. No one should ever go hungry. Uh, it's simple. It's very simple. Um, and then to finally answer your question, some of the things people can do, like I said, it's really quite simple. Veganism isn't doing anything special. It's just reduce the cruelty in your life as much as is practical and possible. So if you stepped on a bug, you know, just by living in the societies and the infrastructure we have today, you're going to cause some harm. You're going to cause some cruelty just by existing. That doesn't have to be the case. That's because of the you know, systems that have been imposed upon us, the societal structure set up by an elite few, those in power. Uh, but we don't need to be living like that. We could be living in self-sufficient ways, symbiotically with our environment, living in, like I said, a Garden of Eden where we're surrounded by permaculture, you know, food forests 24 seven and just spending our time tending to the land and appreciating nature and eating, grazing through our property all the time. Uh, that's the life that we really should be living. Uh, but the things people can do, it's a non-action. So you're just choosing not to directly fund something. Instead of putting a meat, dairy, or egg product on your plate, take it out and replace it. It's important to substitute it so that way you're not just cutting out your caloric intake. That's where a lot of people, I think, go wrong is they undereat. Um, there's a lot of calories packed into a little piece of meat, but that's also coming with carcinogens. It's coming with cholesterol, You know, these cancer-causing hormones. You don't need any of that stuff. You can get healthy calories. Sure, you're going to have a larger quantity of food um, to match that caloric density, but you're going to be getting way more nutrients. What happens when you eat a piece of meat is it tells your body you're full, but you're actually not getting the nutrients, you know, to appropriately, you know, meet your, your needs. Uh, so yeah, replace it with accurate nutrients, uh, adequate nutrients like beans, lentils, rice, legumes. which are high in protein, which is, that's it. That's the thing that yep. some people, when they, I've heard this, I went vegan and I put on all this weight and it's like, I asked like the specifics, how, what was your vegan? Oh, I just ate a bunch of pasta. Okay, <laughs> there's, <Yeah. laughs> there's a yeah. problem. You yeah, need and fresh pasta vegetables. itself isn't, you know, uh, evil. It's probably what they're adding into the pasta, which is oily things, highly processed, you know, dressings and stuff like that. Um, and you can make your own dressings at home and you don't have to cook with, with oil. You know, a lot of people cook their vegetables just 
out of habit in oil, you, you don't need to do that. You can use water um, or you can use some kind of vegetable broth. There's a million ways you can do it without adding the oil. The leading killer of vegans is oil, added oil and salt. So if you're getting oil out of you know avocados, whole foods, um, you know like nuts, not a big deal. Um, you, you essentially, for the, to maximize human health, you want a high carb, low fat diet, um, all with whole food, plant-based diet. So you can actually, you know, my girlfriend and I, we eat a ton of pasta, but because it's, you know, brown rice pasta or lentil pasta, um, and we don't add any oil into our home cooked meals, we, we don't struggle with weight gain or, or any mm. health problems like that. Um, so yeah, you can actually eat an abundance of plant foods as long as they're whole food plants. Now, this is where we start to get into the difference of being vegan. You don't have to be a healthy vegan. Now you can optimize your health with a plant-based diet that falls under veganism. But veganism itself doesn't innately make you a healthy person. You can eat Oreos. Those are accidentally <laughs> vegan. You know, you can drink soda, <laughs> eat potato chips, all the oils and salts. Uh, you're not going to be healthy. You're still going to be healthier. You know, vegans on average have, uh, I think it's about 15% lower mortality rates mm -hmm. than in the standard American diet, uh, you know, animal agriculture based um, diets. But uh, yeah, yeah. So um, in order to be healthy, you know, just keep in mind whole foods, plant based. But, but the idea of veganism is to spare a victim that, that doesn't need to be killed. They don't need right. to be, you know, forcibly. We, we rape these dairy cows, for example, so we can take their children once they're born and <laughs> drink the milk that would have gone to that children. It's very strange, very sadistic and completely needless. You know, anyone who's a, a woman or a mother um, should hear this and go, oh, wait a minute that cow is going through the same nine month pregnancy cycle, very similar to what I would go through as a human. How would I feel if I was repeatedly raped by another species just to have my children taken away at birth? Um, it's very sad. And when you watch footage, when I show people I'm in the streets and I'm doing activism, I'm showing people footage of what actually happens to dairy cows um, and their children, people are disgusted, they're repulsed. Most people see this, nine out of 10 people see this kind of stuff and they go, oh, well, yeah, I didn't wanna fund cruelty. I don't want to fund suffering if I don't have to. A lot of people just don't even know, you know, just because it's separated. The animal agriculture industry, for some reason, right. doesn't show that in their commercials. No, that's <laughs> weird. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. Weird that that uh, just uh, got edited out for some weird reason. What a wacky coincidence. The other thing I want to point out, too, is show me another mammal that drinks another mammal's milk. Like, yep. that's the thing you know, we should breastfeed up until, I'm not sure what the exact age is, I'm not a physician, but that's then we stop breastfeeding and we don't need, like if you saw a chimpanzee nursing on a cow in a field, you'd think that's the craziest thing you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But that's the equivalent of what we're doing. Right. And like, right. I, look, I grew up in Wisconsin. I was told glass of milk makes you healthy. And I, I, was, I totally thought a glass of milk made you healthy. And then I started doing research and I noticed, you know, when I, when I got off the dairy, I started to get healthier and I didn't have as much like sinus and congestion and all this stuff like that. And the other thing I want to note, point out too, you're bringing up a great fact about, we all think, and this is something I talk about a lot on this show, like vote with your dollars, right? So what you're talking about is if all of us got away, like it's already, you're already seeing, and, and you're already seeing companies come up with more vegetarian and vegan options. Now some, of course, it's some Monsanto's getting involved and putting in their fucking awful GMO, you know, so you have to pay attention a little more. But I, but the point that is being made um, is that we, we have, we all have more power than we think if we all get this together. And I want to point out that air quality in Los Angeles this past week has been better than it's been in decades decades because nobody is driving. There's very few cars on the road. It's, it's, I've, I've lived in Los Angeles for over 20 years. This is, there's, I can't compare this to when it first started, we started slowing down like a week and a half ago. I was like, wow, this is like, you know, Christmas morning at 6 a.m. Now it's like nothing I've ever seen. And the air quality is amazing. So look, and we're all being forced to stay home. Not, I mean, I drive an electric car, but like, what if we all stop driving this much? What if we all went to plant-based diets? See how much power we have? We just have fixed the environment in a week and a half inadvertently through this quarantine. Mm -hmm. And it sh I want everyone to like pay it, see what happens when we all get involved. Like, you know, Jeff Bezos, like what if 50 million Amazon users all said, nope, we're all boycotting it until he goes union with his staff. We're not... He, it, it would happen overnight. Right. right. So there might be, 
I'm hoping there's a lot of good that comes out of this. We're either at the, the like, this is the beginning of the end, like this is, this is the human race is gonna end, or we're gonna have this, this thing, this, we're all in this together and everybody's seeing A, how awful capitalism is. The, the Senate just passed this bullshit $2 trillion bailout that's, oh great, we all get to get low interest loans? Awesome. You know, um, and at 1200 bucks a month, oh yeah, that'll pay for it. No, but there's no rent freeze. There's none of these things we need. Everybody's seeing in real time. It's weird. No, I don't hear one, how are we gonna pay for it for this $2 trillion? Yeah. I'm not hearing nope. that at all. Yeah. And we're seeing how we're all affected. You know, we're seeing how important the worker is. The CEOs are told to stay home. Who gives a shit? The people that have to be the cash register, the cashiers at the at the food stores, unloading the trucks, obviously all the medical personnel, the people that make the medical products that we're in short supply of, the ventilators and the masks. See how important the worker is and not these bag of shit CEOs? Like, I hope everybody's seeing how connected we are and what you're talking about. This is not a separate issue. Like going plant-based vegan is not separate from what we're going through. It's another way that we can save the planet. We can grow our own food. We shouldn't, what we're seeing too is look what globalization has done. We get products from China, medical supplies, and oh, now we're out of them. We had to shut our borders. L look at this. I, I point this out, Russia, because of the sanctions during Obama years, had to figure out how to grow its own food and make its own products because we forced, the world forced them to do that. Right. So when this coronavirus hit, they shut their borders down. They have all, they make their own medicines. They make their own food. That's why they don't have rampant outbreaks there. And they have, they have free healthcare. So yep. I hope everyone's realizing that if we went to a plant-based lifestyle, it would be better, first of all, a lot of these viruses I'm reading come from animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and mm -hmm. so we're seeing how everything actually is way more connected than we all thought. And even during the debates, you know, they always try to make these separate issues and, and Bernie is like, no, this is connected. Like that's a separate issue. It's like, no, a Green New Deal in it, in a Green New Deal, in Bernie's Green New Deal would be like, growing our own food, making our own products, growing more of a plant-based life, everything being made and shipped here, America. So if we, have to, if we have to shut our borders again for another pandemic, and there could be one 10 times worse than this, this is just, mm -hmm. this is bad, but this is like a bad flu. What if they're one that had like a 30, 40% mortality rate or something like that, that just was wiping people out? Mm -hmm. so, so getting into this and realizing how, um, we are all in this together and every action that each individual take actually matters. We're seeing this like young, healthy people. I'm not infected. You could be and going out and giving it to people. Yep. So yep. this is all relatable and it, it, it makes, it makes great sense. Um, what you're saying. So I want to ask you this, um, as we wrap up here, what are some, some websites or places people could go who, again, who, who are new to this whole lifestyle and are looking for new information on how to make this transition? Where would you send them? Totally. I mean, if you want information on the health benefits, uh, there's a great website, nutritionfacts.org. It's, all, it's also got a YouTube, um, social media platform. Um, that will show you quick little uh, two minute, five minute videos on any topic about nutrition that you're curious about. It's not a vegan site or a uh, you know, pro plant-based site. It's really just a science, a nutrition facts, science-based site where they gather all the top data from around the world. It's all peer reviewed, double blind, randomized controlled studies. The top tier, the gold standard of scientific research, they gather all the top data and they condense it and consolidate it into a big picture of exactly what the human body needs, biologically speaking, to be at optimal function. And that turns out to be a whole foods plant-based diet, 100% um, is, is the highest percentage of your diet that you can have whole, play, whole foods uh, that are plants, the better off you're gonna be. So people that are curious or have doubts about the health, go to nutritionfacts.org. If you're curious about the climate aspect, I would go to Cowspiracy Facts. Um, that's where they've, similar idea, they've accumulated all the top research globally on environment and animal agriculture. And um, they're finding that there's one industry by far that is the leading cause of uh, deforestation, ocean dead zones, species extinction, world starvation. World starvation is primarily caused by the animal agriculture industry because we're going into second, third world nations 
kicking down their doors, taking all their land and largely deforesting it for animal agriculture, you know, livestock to be then shipped over to first world nations. So gluttonous, privileged folks in America and the UK you know, can stuff their faces. Uh, meanwhile, these people over there are starving because their land has been destroyed by the, the animal agriculture industry. So um, that's when a lot of people don't know the world starvation primary cause of, of that. We actually grow enough crops right now to meet the nutrient needs of everyone on the planet and reverse or address world starvation three times over currently with the amount of crops we produce. But because a, a cow, for example, eats six to 12 times what a human would eat, we waste away all of that food, all those perfectly fine crops to a cow to fatten them up as quick as possible, just to slit their throat and chop their body into a hundred pieces to ship over to first world nations for a fraction of the nutrients. Um, so wasteful, so destructive. Um, some, other, some other things that are, are caused by the animal agriculture industry, um, I said ocean dead zones, water waste in general, um, one of the leading causes of pollution. You talked about the transportation industry, uh, just being halted for a moment, cleared the air. That's 13% of our greenhouse gases coming from transportation. 51% of our greenhouse gases come from the animal agriculture industry. And that's a conservative number, right. 51%. So imagine if each individual, which uh, just after a year of being vegan, you save a thousand lives. So that's that's a good reason, just morally. You know, if you if you think of yourself as an ethical, moral person, then that's already something you should be doing. Um, despite the climate and health benefits, um, you save a thousand lives in a in a year. Imagine how much pollution you could decrease. There are more accurate numbers, less conservative numbers that are following the supply chain of the animal agriculture industry all the way back to the beginning. And they're realizing it's about 86% of our global greenhouse gases are caused by the animal agriculture industry with all the, the natural gas and the, the fuel and the energy systems in place. This is the biggest and longest standing form of discrimination we've ever seen. We have these massive, you know, factory farms and slaughterhouses, even if they're not factory farms, we still have to realize uh, it's still not moral to breed someone into existence. If I, if I bred someone into existence, which is what we did with slaves, and then you gave them some housing and you gave them good food and you gave them a nice caged area to roam, and then you snuck up behind them and slit their throat, that doesn't make it any better. Uh, and you're actually wasting more resources by having to give all of these animals more room. The reason we have factory farms is because it's less resource intensive. You know, we're trying to consolidate the resources as much as possible with factory farms. So even though 99% of our food comes from factory farms, uh, that's not the sole reason that it, it contributes to climate change and um, the ethical issues and things like that. Uh, but yeah, so I forgot what uh, you were asking. Oh, source, uh, sources to, to go check out. If someone wants to actually make that change, I would go to challenge 22 Dot com. It's going to give you a free mentor, and they're going to walk you through 22 days of trying to break the habit of eating animals and their secretions. Uh, so totally free. They'll point to you uh, what local places you can go in your community uh, to find healthy, fresh foods to start substituting. You can still be eating. They'll show you how to still eat the same things. You Ice cream, pizza, pasta. You can still have all that great stuff. Just have the healthier vegan version, cruelty-free version. Um, so challenge22.com, great resource for people that actually just want to get active, give it a try. Um, and then Cowspiracy is great. It's a documentary, but you can also go to their website. <coughs> Sorry. <There you coughs> go. Oh. And then What the Health is another great documentary about the health aspect that's going to sum up, give people just a quick uh, overview of the, the basic idea that humans don't need. There's, there's never been a time when humans developed a biological dependency on these products. You know, for a short time, sure, we, we had to hunt to survive, but it was such a short time in our whole span of our evolution that it never forced us biologically to right. depend on, you know, hunting and things like that. So there's really, there's really no reason for it in a modern civilized society anymore. Um, and then finally, for the ethical stuff, this, this guy, Gary Yurofsky, has turned millions of people vegan with this one speech he gave on YouTube. It's called The Best Speech You'll Ever Hear. Just look up The Best Speech You'll Ever ever Hear. It's this bald guy with glasses, Gary Yurofsky. He's an animal rights activist. And uh, he finds a really good no BS way of just driving home the point. Since we have no need to eat these products, we have to realize now that we are, we are subjecting highly intellectual individuals 
to a lifetime of enslavement and torture by the trillions. Over three trillion animals every year are tortured, mutilated, slaughtered for just our taste buds alone. That's, that's preposterous. That's more than all the humans in any war throughout human history. All the, all the humans, combine them all together, every year, three trillion lives are lost just because of our taste buds. So you kind of, it puts things in perspective when you step outside of our you know, egocentric, um, you know, human-centric, human supremacist right. worldview, then we realize, oh yeah, this, this is completely needless. And what do you know, uh, it turns out breeding innocent animals into existence to slit their throat repeatedly doesn't have great side effects on the environment or our health. It's almost like there's this karmic nature of the universe that's designed to keep balance. It, it evolved, you know, it brought these creatures in our lives into existence to be our Earth family. You know, we're here to live with them. They're not here for us to just exploit and abuse. So there's, of course, negative repercussions. It's amazing that humans thought we could go so long without there being repercussions for just needlessly stabbing oh, we, oh, baby animals. In we thought we could go so long with the, no repercussions for toxic capitalism, for plundering mm -hmm. the environment, for just yeah. just screwing over the workers and letting yep. and, and idolizing the 1%. Like this, 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 yeah. this whole pandemic is showing everything, mm -hmm. how it's really pulling the cover off of capitalism, off the ruling class, off of, everything the climate it's we're seeing all of it in real time and if the human race doesn't want to wake up and doesn't evolve every species that doesn't evolve goes extinct so yeah that's where yeah. we're at <laughs> and this is one of the things that unlike every other social justice movement um, this is the fastest growing social justice movement of the past three decades um, because of how simple it is you know we we are realizing at a really rapid rate that there's there's no justification for continuing to subject other animals to this and destroy the planet in the meantime. So this is one of the few things that we as individuals actually have power over. It's so easy to feel powerless and hopeless, especially when you're in a lockdown situation, you're mm -hmm. stuck in your home. Well, guess what? Some of the world's major problems, like I said, climate change, deforestation, ocean dead zones, species extinction, world starvation, all major human health problems, you know, uh, suffering as a whole, almost all major human suffering occurs that it goes back to the animal agriculture industry. I mean, think of the workers, think mm -hmm. of not just the indigenous peoples who are having their land taken away in 91% of the Amazon just deforested for livestock, like we we're talking about before. Uh, but the workers themselves that have to sit in pools of blood by the hour, these oh. slaughterhouse workers. And what do you know, these factories are put in places of minorities, people, you know, of poverty, people mm -hmm. who are already disadvantaged. That's where they put these farms. Um, and then, of course, those people have no choice. But the, the only job available is to slit the throats of baby cows all day yeah, by the fire. hundreds, sometimes the thousands. What kind of life are we subjecting these people to? They end up with PTSD. They end up with depression. They end up with suicide. They end up with domestic violence. This is a, a human crisis as well. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's so many things that you can address in the world um, just by, like you said, voting with your dollars. Change what's on your plate. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that simple. It's non-action. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to be this big animal rights nope. vegan activist and douse yourself in blood in the grocery <laughs> store and go, me, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You feel free, whatever. Uh, but what's <laughs> important is that not only we do divest from that industry, but we share the truth with people, you know, like we are here. I'm not trying to judge anyone. I spent 27 years of my life doing something I was indoctrinated to do that I regret. I feel disgusting, you know, when I look back at what I did. Um, and I thought I needed to. The second I learned humans don't need to be doing this, I stopped doing it. So I grew up. We all grew up. I mean, I grew up eating meat. I grew up in the Midwest. I mean, I right. you know big steaks and all that meat and potatoes, and that's mm -hmm. I, I always you know I played sports, so I needed all the protein, or so I was yeah. told. And a glass yeah. of milk makes you feel better. I was told we we we, you know, I don't judge you. We're all victims of how we were raised, the country we were raised in, the family, the community, the area, the region. We're all victims of that. Exactly. So once you wake up and you start making some changes and little changes make a huge difference. Well, Jackson, I really appreciate you taking the time with us today and supporting the show and giving us great information. So folks, here's some great way how going plant-based can actually, you can do this during this quarantine and it's better for you, your wallet, the, the community and the planet um, since we are all connected and we're learning this in real time. Um, 
and clearly the federal government doesn't give a rat's ass about us. So that's what we're all learning too in real time. So uh, Jackson, tell us your website and where people can watch your show. Yeah, you can check me out at Jackson Facts here on YouTube. I also have another channel just based on animal agriculture activism, animal rights activism uh, called Action Jackson. You can check that out as well. Nice. Thank you so much. Everybody like, share, subscribe, uh, and watch the ads all the way through. When you click skip ad, I don't get paid. It's a great free way to support the show. And then, of course, you can do what Jackson has done. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, which is a uh, blockchain cryptocurrency platform. Um, progressive comedy tour dates, you know, uh, I, well, as soon as the, <laughs> we know, you'll know right now, um, the March and now April tour dates have been, uh, will be rescheduled for the fall. Uh, as we get, we'll know I, the May, May dates and beyond. I can't tell you at this point, they're still happening. That could change. I don't know, but, um, thanks for watching. Thank you, Jackson, for taking your time today. You're all making Gotham great again. And boom, shave your knuckles for justice. Yeah, go vegan, everyone. Go vegan. <laughs> hey, everybody. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing, many of you, every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.